She lives with friends Angie, Richard and Stumpy, the punk cat, in a West Hampstead anarchist squat. Their inspiration came from seeing the Sex Pistols in 1976, but were too young then to get involved. Sex Pistols was like a callus with anarchy in the UK, you know, when that came out. It's a, it's a real jar to the senses. I mean, anarchy in the UK, who'd, who'd, who'd sort of heard of any of this before, you know? I mean, the Such word anarchy it made us all go, I mean, oh, anarchy, let's look it up in the dictionary. I mean, it, it gets us... Even before, anarchy, even before anarchy, anarchy came out, I was sort of sitting at school. And I'd never heard of the sex, uh, sex Pistols before. And somebody's reading a newspaper, and they're going, Christ, this group's sort of like fighting their own audience. And I sat there and I thought, my God, a group beats up their own audience, so she's got to have something, you know, it just must be mad. Well, we were always different anyway. I mean, like, we dressed um, slightly different, more on the avant-garde disco scene, like pegs and plastic sandals before mm. punk came out. And I saw this girl, yeah. I might think must be Susie, at Charing Cross Station at really early 76, and she had a safety pin through her ear. I didn't even know what punk was, and I thought, brilliant idea, and then crushed. <laughs> so I rushed off home, got the safety pins in, so I was wearing safety pins before I even knew what punk was. Though their music remains central to 1983 punks, it isn't everything. Michelle, for instance, is also about to appear in a play. Chris has got this uh, little theatre where he hasn't even got a stage, but he's got like places for seats at the top of this pub in Mile End. He does punk plays for punks by punks. And, uh, well, oh, leave him alone. I mean, but he tried. He, he's got sympathies that way. He's about 23. Is he? Yeah, he's the age. <laughs> and uh, he writes some really good stuff. I mean, he's a writer, so um, Time Out said he was. A, he got a brilliant review in the Times of all places, so it was really good, nitty gritty dialogue and everything, and uh, really perceptive and everything like that. And Time Out didn't think it was a uh, true to life enough because the punks were too articulate. <laughs> I'm sorry, we weren't quite working class and yobby enough. Not quite stupid. Not quite yeah. stomo enough for uh, Time Out. I mean, you know how they like to stereotype their uh, things. Style is its own statement, of course. Nowadays, the early raw look has given way to a more painstakingly cultivated dandyism. The way of life it is in your clothes and your hair and. Yeah, your attitudes right. and everything, but for a lot of people, that's the only way they do ever get to express themselves. Because it's so short, I can't really do the roots, so I'm always forever just doing the ends, and I just get more and more like glue. Have you ever over bleached hair or done a home perm, and it goes like glue, like copy dicks? But the differences between 1976 and 1983 go a lot deeper than fashion. Outraging the public or even gobbing are now as boring as a Top of the Pops disco hit. Organised politics are out, blood and roses. Like we're interested in the politics of the individual, whereas the individual has the right to do whatever the individual wants, whatever the individual needs to do to make their life happy without the silly restrictions that a government feels obliged to put on people. Well, there's more than just anger. Anger's an emotion that's just been done to death over the past five years. There's more emotions than that, there's more scope of feeling. There has, to be, there has to be more than just anger. Like, yeah, you feel anger for your governments, you feel anger for, against them. But then you've got to also be able to experience all the other things. You know, like, anger is too much of a limiting emotion. It takes over everything. Yeah, sure, we're angry about governments, all that kind of things, but there are other emotions that need to be expressed as well. And people have got to learn to sort of express themselves more freely instead of just putting on up shields, you know, that, that they've been conditioned to have. In their non-violent antagonism towards established politics and determination to change themselves before tackling the world, positive punks remind me a bit of 1960s hippies, though more realistic, less mystically drug-based. The music and energy of 1976 has combined with 1967's idealism. It's a fresh angle of attack on the awfulness of 1980s Britain. Style, music, tactics, the modern punk idiom isn't a media fad. It's, in my opinion, nothing less than a moral attitude. 
And that now we're sort of realising that we don't, we don't want to settle down, we don't want to change that much. And it's not a cult to us anymore, it is mm. sort of like... Well, it's like mum used to say, oh, we should go out a bit, like 16, yeah. and I'm 23 yeah. now. I mean, she's just accepting it now, just. And if you want to compare it to 76, what the whole attitude is to keep on thinking, do anything you want to do. If you want to be a street sweeper, be a street sweeper, you know. Don't moan about things, don't moan about unemployment, don't moan about politics. You can't change it. Moaning about it's not going to change it. If you're going to get free money off the government, use your time to do whatever you want to do with it. I just said, the important thing is to be an individual and not a part of any sort of any group that you can be labelled easily you know just just be yourself basically yeah. just be you this destroy destroy thing before destroyed society i think people now accept that society exists and and that and that just by being in a band isn't going to change the world so punk hasn't been revived after all but it has changed and it's become something of a synthesis, I feel, between the, the, the sort of optimism and, and uh, political ideals of the 60s underground that I remember and all that started in 1976. Whether it keeps that momentum and makes any real changes, I think, remains to be seen. Personally, I remain very optimistic. And optimism's what it's all about, really, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs>